What is up guys? It's your girl T aka the nappy headed ho bub back with another nobody asked you ho get ranty with me. There is some kind of noise coming from the outside. I don't know if it's just some asshole teenager on like a motorbike or something but it is persistent and it is annoying and it is loud and I'm hoping that my mic isn't picking up too much of it. There's quite a few things I want to talk about today. Nothing especially fresh, just things that have happened over the last week or so that I haven't had a chance to chat with you guys about. This wedding is in less than two hours, so I do kind of have to hustle getting ready here. And hopefully there won't be another earthquake while I'm getting ready because there have been two in the past two days. Luckily, I'm pretty far away from the epicenter, so it hasn't been that scary, but it's still kind of scary. So here's hoping that we don't have another earthquake. I mean, earthquake. As usual, I'm gonna be doing my makeup in my mirror down here, so hopefully I'll remember not to do it like this throughout the video. Let's start off talking about this Little Mermaid live action casting announcement. I was relieved to learn that I am not the only person who originally read the headline that Halle Berry had been cast to play Ariel, because it's just like, um, no tea, no shade, but she's not really the correct age, but turns out it was Halle Bailey of the singing duo Chloe and Halle. I believe they are sisters, but I'll confess I was not slash am not terribly familiar with them because I am a grandpa and I'm generally out of it at all times. I never know what's up with the youth. I just mind my business and never know who anyone is or what's going on until way, way after the fact. Regardless, upon announcing that Halle Bailey had been cast to play Ariel, there was a lot of outrage from a bunch of racists. Halle Bailey is black and as if that wasn't bad enough, she also has locks instead of red hair. Here is my take. The outrage over this casting from the people who are big mad about it, this outrage is a consequence of having absolutely zero real problems. If you're this mad about casting a black girl as Ariel because she doesn't look like the real one. The real one being a fucking cartoon mermaid. And if you somehow feel oppressed by this, then you have absolutely zero concept of what it really feels like to experience oppression. A lot of the tweets I've seen expressing outrage over this whole thing start with, I'm not racist. Here's a good rule of thumb. If you have to preface whatever you're about to say with, I'm not racist, but just stop talking because you're about to expose yourself as a fucking racist, you tone deaf nitwit. And then there's the people who like to say something bigoted and then end with, I'm Asian, by the way, or I'm Hispanic, by the way. Whatever it is, I got news for you. Having a bit more melanin than say, a white person doesn't somehow automatically absolve you from being racist. This is the whole, I can't be racist because I have black friends version 2.0. I mean, there are racists who have black kids, so just shut the fuck up. Next, this whole, you're ruining our childhood memories argument. I have less than zero sympathy and understanding for these complaints. Get over it. It's a fucking cartoon from the 80s, which by the way, will continue to exist. All of you dipshits hashtagging not my Ariel, you are pathetic. Your intellectual and emotional development must have halted when the animated film was first released because you're tantruming like five-year-olds, grow up. It took more than 50 years for Disney to even have their first black princess with the princess and the frog. And it might just be my perception because I wasn't really fucking with Disney anymore by the time that came out. But that movie feels like it was treated as a B movie. And I just feel like it didn't get the same promotion and budget for that matter of say, The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and those types of Disney films. Weren't people also pissed about them casting Beyonce and Donald Glover for the Lion King as well, to play fucking lions as if the real lions were white. It really is appalling just how upset some people get over us having anything. Because this casting isn't going 
to create the equality that these racists so clearly fear. The people profiting the most, and Adrian Expression pointed this out as well, are the already rich white Disney executives and shareholders. Just like Nike when they announced their partnership with Colin Kaepernick. I am certain that both Nike and Disney did the requisite risk assessments before making this announcement and this decision. And they confirmed that the benefits would outweigh the backlash. These racists are being dragged kicking and screaming into an era where you can't exclude people of color quite as blatantly as they used to do. Because we buy movie tickets too, and corporations like Disney and Nike want that coin. This casting is a step in the right direction, even if the motivation itself is rooted in the ever so cynical inclusivity marketing. Diversity is so hot right now. I loved Disney growing up pretty much as all little girls do, and I can only wonder what it would have meant for me to see a Princess Tiana, let alone a Black Ariel, when I was a kid because I adored The Little Mermaid. To this day, my favorite songs from any Disney movie are the ones in The Little Mermaid. If you fuck with me heavy, you know how I derisively like to talk about how Marvel finally ended racism once and for all with Black Panther. Sarcasm aside, I do think there is a lot of value in little black girls and little black boys being able to see people who look like them playing leads and being heroes. Being Ariel instead of Ursula, which if that had been the casting announcement where it was going to be a black person playing Ursula instead of Ariel, none of these racists would have had a problem. Bet that. If they had announced a black actress was going to play the evil sea witch, there would have been no issue. Speaking of racist, let's talk about colorist Chris Brown. This story has more or less blown over by now, as they always do. But in case you missed it, Chris Brown was in the news for being a colorist and just generally being an asshole. I guess he has a new song out where he says something to the effect of, I only fuck black bitches with good hair, or something like that. I'm sure we were all very shocked to hear that Chris Brown is kind of a fucked up guy. I haven't looked too much into this story, honestly. I did see some chatter where some women were saying, good hair, what's that supposed to mean? What do you mean good hair? We all know what he means. I think it's more than a little disingenuous to act like we don't know what it means when the Chris Browns of the world talk about good hair. Zendaya, or if we wanna go back to the 90s, there's always Chili, good hair icon. Anyway, when Breezy was called out on being colorist for this lyric because good hair, is very often accompanied by light bright skin, the whole white adjacent beauty starter kit. Apparently he kept refuting these accusations by saying, I have a whole song called Brown Skin Girl, y'all y'all reaching. A defense which is, I'm not racist, I have black friends, version 3.0. Some song from God Knows When, which I've personally never even heard of, doesn't somehow absolve you from being a colorist prick, Chris Brown. Because colorism is just the manifestation of racism internalized and then directed outward again, some of the most anti-black people are black people. I need to wash this cream shadow off my hands and pop on lashes, BRB. Where was I? Oh yeah, Chris Brown is a colorist prick. As evidenced by the next piece of this story, which came out a day or two later, about Chris Brown allegedly uh, banning dark-skinned women from attending various events and parties he's thrown. Again, so surprised to hear that Chris Brown is a shithead. I don't think I'm physically capable of getting worked up over things Chris Brown says or does after so many years of this. I mean, in the beginning, he served his punishment for whooping Rihanna's ass and he seemed repentant. And most importantly for me, she seemed to have forgiven him. So I used to think that that warranted giving him the benefit of the doubt. And I will confess, I do like a good amount of his music, although I still have never heard of Brown Skin Girl. I don't know what that is. So if one of his songs came on my Pandora station, historically, I don't skip. But he has shown us enough times in the years since that he's still a real piece of shit. So even though I'm not going to his concerts or seeking out his new albums or whatever, passive support is still support. 
and he is making it clear that he doesn't even deserve that because this black bitch don't got the good hair so he ain't fucking with me anyway so ain't no reason for me to fuck with him either i do want to do a whole video on texture hair texture politics very soon which really will just be a continuation of the discussions that we started in my last video and in my colorism video i've already chatted with some of you guys about texturism as I like to call it in the comment sections. Some of you guys were calling it hairism. I say texturism, which I'm not sure if that's a word either, but that's what I'm going with for now anyway. Oh, and let's talk about Danielle Cohn real quick. My girl Yasmin and I were talking about this just yesterday on Instagram, or I guess by the time you guys see this video, like two days ago. I don't know a whole lot about Danielle Cohn. Like, I don't know who this girl is or what the situation is. And you probably don't either because we are not her demographic. But what I've learned is extremely disconcerting. Evidently, Danielle Cohn is an influencer on YouTube and in Instagram. And I think TikTok or Musical.ly, I don't know, one of them. I think one of those bought the other actually, but who really gives a shit? Point is, there has been a lot of speculation about this girl falsifying her age for quite some time. She claims to be 15, I believe, but there are several YouTube videos that provide evidence that she is actually 13 years old. Surface level, this doesn't sound like a huge deal until you look at the hypersexual images that she posts on Instagram and on YouTube, which I will not be showing here because I'm not trying to get my channel deleted, as well as the fact that Danielle Cohn's so-called boyfriend, who I guess is also a YouTuber, is 17 years old. It seems that the boyfriend's parents recently discovered that Danielle isn't 15 like she says she is, and is actually 13, and rightfully, they freaked out. I guess they've now confiscated his phone and revoked his access to social media and are just generally keeping him away from Danielle because they don't want him to, you know, go to fucking jail. I'm Alex did a video on this, which is actually how I heard about it. So I'll link that in the description box if you wanna know more. It's all just very interesting because there is overwhelming evidence that this girl is an actual child because 15 is hella young to begin with, let alone 13. And there has been no parental intervention in terms of her obvious over-sexualization. And indeed, it seems that since her family is profiting from it, they encourage it. Not to mention the sanctioning of all this by the brands that sponsor her, thereby encouraging and perpetuating what is essentially child word that rhymes with corn. Even my self-censorship in this video is illustrating a disturbing truth because I'm far more likely to get demonetized or even have my channel deleted for showing some of her content or even just discussing it than she is for actually creating said content because she's in this echelon of content creators who are too big to fail. YouTube and Instagram turn a blind eye to the fact that they're profiting off of kitty corn. Somehow they will find excuses to continue to deem her advertiser friendly while they continue to demonetize videos from people who talk about news and real issues like Philip DeFranco all the way down to smaller creators like King of Reads and your girl right here. I mean, really, can someone explain to me how a scantily clad tween in suggestive poses who fakes a marriage and then of pregnancy is advertiser friendly because her audience is probably an even split between impressionable little kids and old perverts. Anyway, it's just really disturbing the obvious preferential treatment that YouTube gives to certain creators and not others. Those that they, again, consider too big to demonetize, too big to fail, which honestly I would think should include Philip DeFranco, but because he is candid about when and how this platform fucks up and how it is generally trash, he's probably just on their bad side permanently at this point. And then if you are a melanated person, you're already on the bubble and forget it if you actually make a foray into even remotely controversial subject matter in your videos. 
Okay, I'm just about done with my face here. I'm gonna go ahead and do my finishing touches off camera because I need to hurry up and get the fuck out of here. All right, you guys, I am in so much of a rush. I have got to walk the dog and like run out of here. So this is the finished look. This is the best look you're gonna get from now. I, I don't even have time to show you my full outfit. And because I am so short on time, I just went with a head wrap and a bit of fringe. So that is it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while I got ready for this wedding. I will see you guys very, very soon for another chat. And remember, never trust anyone with a Morphe code. Bye-bye. That's, that's a nappy-headed hose there. I'm going to take that down.